as I approach 40, I'm starting to realize I'm, I'm Maybe getting, not young anymore. I'm not young anymore, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I've been doing this forever. Um, yeah. I mean, since I was 20. They're in it for the wrong reasons, but what's unique about our team, especially with real estate, is when you call them out, it's helping them identify, hey, I've noticed this. This is normally like you. How can I support and help you? Not, not, not shaming. Not, hey, you know, you should be doing, not none of that. The hardest part of this whole job will be you guys moving, especially if you've been in the home for 10, 15, 20 years. They're packing up memories. Today, we wanted to jump into finding agents off the street um, versus maybe with experience. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to dive into agent retention as well. Yep. And we, it's funny because we kind of were like, why did we think about talking about this yeah. and I think for me too is um you know when you set off set out to like start a team like I think you have I mean I kind of had like one thing in my mind and then something else totally happens yeah. as well you know and transitions into something else yeah and and it's kind of a beautiful thing too because you know I always go back and forth like I think if you know, initially I was like, you know, it'd be nice to be able to attract like other top agents that are already in the market, already veteran, basically yeah, know what they're doing and attract your team. But we, by default, have just attracted a lot of like brand new people. Yeah. But then also look how well that's turned out for us too. Totally. Is we're getting them brand new, just licensed, or maybe they're at some, uh, another team, another brokerage. They're there for six months, maybe unsuccessful, whether it's um, it's not a right fit for them. They're not getting the leadership they want or need. Yeah. Um, they're not seeing the potential or, or whatever it might be. They're missing something. Yeah, something's missing. And a lot of times just leads too. Like yeah. people want leads and that's what we're, our team is definitely known for is we do a lot with lead gen. That's always been us. And, um, you know, you think like, you know, you want, maybe you want the veteran agent, but then we have so many people that have come on brand new and yeah. now they're the veteran agents. Exactly. Basically. They're the ones that like setting the standards, if you will. Yeah. And it's kind you of know? cool to see because some of these newer, younger team members that join, like, you know, I'm thinking Aaron, for yeah. example, he just joined the team. I mean, 25 years old, young kid, just full of energy. And he played sports in college and just constantly go getter. And Janelle just told me over the weekend, he met with uh, some folks and, wrote an eight, on an $800,000 house. $800,000 house, and he just got his license recently, which is crazy to think about, right? Like it's you're trusting this person with the largest purchase of your life, but think of the confidence he portrays at 25 years old. Yeah. Right, to put that out. And you know how he got that client was they went into the Briley team's reviews and they saw his positive reviews. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, it's awesome. So he's at almost a million dollars and he started our team a month ago. Yeah. Month and a half at the most. And, and the and the other thing too is like some of the veteran agents that are on the team that have been here for three, four, five, six, seven years, they start seeing that and they're like, it gets them like, that's what we're starting to see too is like, it gets them like, okay, like I can change things in my business. I can maybe change things up. I should maybe try focusing on that. It kind of gives them a little bit of fire and energy to like get after it a little bit more too. And then plus when they see some of the newer, younger people get in, yeah, and start really selling it. They're like, "Oh no, you're <laughs> not beating me!" Like I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna start going after it too. Well, and it's like, look at what John says, our coach, right? Um, John says you always want to constantly be hiring, and he says constantly be hiring their replacement, if you will, which sounds bad, kind of a negative. It sounds negative, but John, what he means by that is when he's saying that is don't hire their replacement in a negative way. Hire their replacement to motivate them, to wake them up, to show them what they're missing. I mean. I had two agents today on our team text me and said, hey, I saw a lot of new agents over the weekend had a ton of sales. Put me back on leads. Put me back on this. And actually, we have four vets on the team right now that are on Zillow leads that said, I don't want Zillow leads. And now they, and they just went back on. And they went literally back on today. Yeah. Because I of saw that, that success. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that crazy? So it's, it's, it's always interesting because, again, like if you don't see somebody else around you challenging you, then you don't have your somebody to compare yourself to. Yep. Right? So it's like, that's where you got to constantly put yourself in rooms with other people that are better, right? Like it, we quote unquote are the number one team in Nebraska, right? Yay. But I try to surround myself with people that are like beating us or 
or beating us mercilessly just yeah. so I can feel like, man, I'm not doing that well because otherwise I might settle or relax. Yeah. But that, and that's why we're really part of the Shep Black organization yeah. too. Cause there's plenty of people that beat us up there. I have th 300 million in volume. We're still one really of the small. smaller teams in that organization, exactly. which is crazy to think which about. Which is crazy. You know, we probably beat the next highest team in our market by a hundred or a hundred million. Oh, totally. I mean, it's, it's crazy. I mean, even if it's like, you're just looking at f sheer volume of units that we do, um, you know, puts us some of the top places in the country. So it's just, you always got to constantly put yourself around that. And I think that's why finding agents off the street has been so beneficial for us because they look at Adam sells 25 or 30 million. They're like, oh man, like it pushes and motivates them and it puts a pathway for them to see other successful people, right? Yeah. I was just meeting with somebody today and her uh, biggest question was, how can I identify the top agents on your team? Who are they? Where do they sit? How do I interact with them? And how do I steal their knowledge? And then, like you just said, she's gonna come in and try to mimic the top agents. And then when she starts doing well, the top agents get pushed from new agents. Yeah. It's crazy to see the full and, cycle. And I feel like it initially when John was telling us about this, yeah. like I, I feel like Stacy and I probably fought it the most, like the idea of it. Uh -huh. Like we almost didn't like it. And you, well, you don't want to have a revolving door of like new agents and experience that don't know what they're doing. Yeah. Either. Yeah. And but it is it's really fascinating how that did hold true. And um, I guess you can just go back. John has how many years of experience well. and has seen it over and over again. <laughs> and if we just listen to him. <laughs> Yeah, and do instead it. we push back and fight and think we're our own. Yeah, we're doing our own thing. Like we know what we're doing, and it's like if you just listen to your coach that you're paying, he probably knows what he's doing. Yeah, and it, it is. And back to my thought, like, okay, I, I want to. How do I track like some of these veteran agents? And and you do all the recruiting, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. And and then I even struggle with like, should I be the face of recruiting? And I should be doing that, but I just I'd be horrible at it because I like to. I'm still in production and I love it and. Well, and you're doing so many other things, so you wouldn't it, get back to somebody for a month sometimes. Yeah, I'd, I'd be so bad at that. But, um, yeah, but now, again, you see, like, I love seeing some of these younger people or no experience come in and just kick butt. Like, yeah. it's a really cool thing. And, like, and then seeing, like, what some of these, what some of them have done over the last few years, like, the income they're making and the success they're having and the client reviews they're having is is incredible. Well, it is crazy to think you have, you know, somebody fresh who's nervous and unknown and not sure what to do. And then all of a sudden you look at them three years later or five years later, and you could say that for any agent, Aaron, Aaron Creer, Amanda Sway, Rachel Walker, Aubrey Sukram, Daphne Elliott. I mean, think of their careers when they first started versus now. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing to look at. Yeah. You know, we probably don't do a great job of reflecting on that, but. We don't, we, we, what we need to do better at, I would say is probably like sharing that more yep. publicly too and just showing like because some of them like some of the production that some of those guys do i mean it would make them the top single agents in the marketplace oh, totally. too it's definitely top one percent totally and sometimes they get overshadowed by the team and that could be a problem too yeah right which i know we'll talk about retention um in a little bit but that's something to think about it's but i just want to make sure like this is this is clear like i've taken agents from other brokerages too and we've had struggles right just because they went to another brokerage and they're missing an ingredient, they feel like, I got to join the top team. I'm missing leads. And they join our team and yet they don't sell anything and they leave real estate. Why is that the case that a real estate agent at another brokerage joins us thinking they missed these things and that's why they're not successful? And we know that's not the case, right? They're actually missing drive. They're missing passion. They're missing energy. Accountability. Accountability. Right, it's the highest form of love, and uh, so that's something to think about. So we've had lots of success with agents off the street, and we get flack from it in the community all the time because they assume, oh, this team is associated with inexperienced agents or a lot of newer agents. Yeah. Right. I mean, we do get some flack for that. Yeah, we do. Or we have a we have a young team. Yeah. I mean, but there's more and more younger agents, people getting into this business for sure. And now, as I approach forty. I'm starting to realize I'm, I'm maybe getting, not young anymore. I'm not young anymore, <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I've been doing this forever. Um, yeah. I mean, since I was 20. So yeah, I had another thought on that too, but now it's escaping me too. Well, it's, I think it's, well, it's, like you said, you don't reflect on your, your work history or your playbook or your life or how far it's come. Even look at Adam 20 years ago, right? Like 
that'd be a scary time to go back and look at. Yeah. Well, and, and the new agents too, like how do you get good at something is just getting out there and like the other thing, we, I mean, we do training and, and all that. Right. But of like, course. I'm a fan of like, get out there and yeah. like, just make the mistakes. Like the, the reality is you, you won't be able to make mistakes because you are part of our team. Like we'll catch any mistakes that you might make yeah. with the client. Of course. But you will make mistakes on like how you are converting them to be your client for sure. sure. Like you will fail. But if, like, if you don't do anything, you won't, you also fail. Yeah. Right. Totally. And, and, and on the accountability piece too, that is, cause a lot of times like you, you get into this because you, you, me, me you want to be your own boss or you want to be in control of your own schedule. And the older I get, I start re- realizing like what I was saying right before we started this is like, I need routine. Yeah. Like, Badly. Like if I don't, if I don't get to bed by, if I'm not in my bed by 10, I'm dog crap the next day. Yeah. Like I'm tired. I, I just, I'm off. If I don't, if I'm not doing the exact same things every single day, which is boring, it's super boring. <laughs> it's and, that, so and that's boring. hard for me. It's so boring. That's very hard for me. And, and, and the sooner agents realize that, oh. or, I mean, you can be anything like the course, sooner you career. realize that you will be such a high performer. It's just like, you know, one topic we were going to talk about is like the amount of drinking or drugs or Ad- or Adderall that goes on in this industry too. Like everyone, yeah. everyone you know is like on Adderall in in a sales position. Uh huh. Um, and but you really don't need that. You just need to stay, just do the boring things every time. But yep. it's it's being held accountable to that. But when you get in, you're like, I want to do my own thing. I want to be my own boss. I don't want to be told what to do. I don't want to be micromanaged. Yep. But and that gets thrown around a lot. Micromanaged. Yeah, and it, there's like this negative connotation with it, but it's also like, no, it's actually what you need. It's what I need. You need it. Yep, like, of course. We all need this. We all need it. And it is, you know, and the sooner we realize like, no, this is this is how we are, this is how we're showing love for yep. you guys is, is holding you guys accountable. Like there's veteran agents on our team and I called one last week and I'm like, hey, no, she haven't sold anything in a while. Like what's going on? And, you know, we start processing like what's going on in their life and, and you know everything and and okay this is this is why i'm where i'm at right now yeah but this is what i have to do today moving forward to get to where i know i need to be and i have zero doubt that that agent is going to get back on it and start making things happen too but it's just it's kind of like you know getting called out a little bit and totally and so does that turn into this like snowball effect of like oh shoot i've gone 30 40 60 days without selling anything and then you're like and then you can really get into deep trouble well, I think there's always misconception there, right? Like your boss or supervisor at a job calls you out, right? Like, again, we're, we're, these people are, are, we're not in charge of them, right? But I'm just giving you a real life example. Imagine if your boss calls you out on something you're not doing, right? You always assume that they're they're in it for the wrong reasons. But what's unique about our team, especially with real estate, is when you call them out, it's helping them identify Hey, I've noticed this. This is normally like you. How can I support and help you? Not, not, not shaming. Not, hey, you know, you should be doing. Not, none of that. It's literally, I've noticed these patterns, and the reason why you're on our team is sometimes to be held accountable and, and called out, and the, that way you're not in this dark path for 90 days or 120 days. Because to me, it's like shame on Adam and I and the rest of our team if we don't notice you're struggling and you're not performing. And then we come to you four months later and we're like, yeah, you just, you're not doing anything. And we've been caught in that. We've been caught in that many times. I yeah. mean, over th- what, four years I've been here, I've been caught in it all the time. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying we're perfect. We do it all the time. Yeah. But we've gotten better at it though. I feel like we have really made it something you and I focus on and Janelle to, ch- and probably Stacy too, but checking in, you know, every day I have a list of people that I'm calling, texting, video messaging to make sure that they don't get fallen behind. Yeah. And we divide and conquer a lot on our people. And it's not because it's, again, like you said, it's not to call somebody out and say, you're doing poor. Yeah, it's not a negative it's thing. It's not. And I think if we're up front with agents and we tell them, they're not upset about it. No. And I'm sure the agent you called last week, which I know they messaged me today, is they were grateful that you called them. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think that's always kind of fascinating. But this is something to think about. When you start your own business, you have two people that work for you. You have your employer, which is yourself, the boss, and then you have your employee, which is you yourself. So again, and this is something that we've learned from a coach is you need to put that hat on, if you will, and tell yourself what to do, right? Like make calls, time block, do these things. 
And then you need your your employer, aka yourself, to take a step back and look, did I do any of the things I said I was going to do? The reason why employers are so successful in business, and when you start your own small business, you're not, is because you don't have that quote unquote employer telling you what to do. Mm -hmm. Think of any business, any business that propels forward is because they have standards, accountability, systems, support, all these things. And then when you go into real estate, you want to ditch all those things. When in fact, if they're done the right way, your business can climb to the next level. Yeah. Right. So it's just, it's something to think about. It's kind of fascinating, but. Well, I, and that's why a lot of the agents that are no longer on our team, whether it's we have, we've parted ways or they decided to leave is because um, I would say maybe a little bit of pushback on of didn't want to be held accountable. Yeah. And it's, but, you know, but then there's a lot of agents on our team that they like, they want it. They're like, we want it. We need it. We, we know we're flawed. And I think salespeople in general are like, I mean, they have EDD. Oh yeah. To, to, I mean, I mean, that's like a, a good salesperson. Is oh, for like, sure. They're just has, jumping around looking for the next cool big yeah, thing, you know? And, like, yeah. And, well, and then the chasing shiny objects yeah. thing. I mean, that's a whole topic there too, because I have been caught up in that many, many, many times. And we'll it, probably cover that on the podcast. Like yeah. how many realtors have 10,000 shiny objects and there's 10,000 people willing to sell it to you? <laughs> yeah. And they're still existing today. The next thing you know, you got maxed out credit cards. You're like, what did I do here? <laughs> what did I do? But don't worry. <laughs> I made 50 grand. I spent 200 grand to get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a real estate right there, a real estate agent's mindset. But um, I think it's like you just said, it's, I think to put it in this perspective is if you join our team, you're going to find that we, the, the culture or people that are surrounded by enjoy and like that accountability and that push. If you don't, you're going to find out quickly and you'll leave quickly, right? And the agents that came in from other brokerages, other teams, or off the street, at the end of the day, just because you join us doesn't mean that'll turn into success. So again, like we brought agents from other places. You have to put in the work. You got to put in the work. We brought in agents from other places and they have done little to no work and we've given them leads and we are like, what's going on here? And it's they're not doing any of the work at the last place. So was it the last place to blame or was it you? And sometimes it's hard to take that reflection, but it's we have found massive success with agents off the street and, and we've we've done really good with it. Um, and we've done well with making sure that we foster the relationship of having kind, nice people willing to help. I mean, how often do agents jump into our Slack channel and say, I need help with verbiage? And the first agent to jump in is a seasoned vet of five or six years who's, and they raise their hand. And who's really busy you generally. Know, and yeah. who's also busy. And uh, so I think that's also huge. That's part of our culture. Well, and a, and a lot of times you join, like especially if someone first thinks like, okay, well, I'm gonna join this team and I'm just gonna get massive amounts of leads. And we oh, do no. have a lot of leads. We have For access sure. to a lot of leads, but we've also realized, and this really came from like, whether it's the Shep Black organization, it's a mixture of that. And like, you know, I think back to like Buddy Blake, who's a, owner of a Remax brokerage in like North Carolina or South Carolina. Um, or, and even Zillow has pushed this too oh, totally. for us is like limit the number of leads. Cause what we've also found is the agents that constantly take lead after lead after lead, they generally have some of the lowest performance. So then we, which sounds crazy. Yeah. You know, cause then you stop, you just take the lowest hanging fruit. Well, there's a lot of opportunities there. A lot, a lot of good people there that you can start working Yep, and it, and it forces you to put in the work too. So that's another thing we realized too. With yep, hey, you're going to join our team. We're going to give you leads, but you're we're going to cap you off every yep. month. Like you have to work it, and not just think like that. It's just constant like. And then if you don't convert, we can't keep sending you leads because wasted opportunity. Yeah, it's wasted opportunity. Like it's uh, you got to put in the work. Yep, you can't just I you know, and that's the other thing too is like a lot of a lot of people join. Or, or just get into real estate, like get a lead and uh, you just think it's going to like convert like right convert away. Convert itself. R- really quickly. And Zillow actually converts really quickly compared to most leads. I mean, 22% is what our conversion is right now. The average internet lead is 1%. Well, and not even that, the time frame of it too. Like, you know, during the summer months, like you oh, get a Zillow no. lead and you're selling a house within three weeks. I know. It's crazy. Where, where normal leads open house lead internet a normal internet lead is like what 360 days basically yeah, basically it's, a it's, year it's yeah it's basically a year and and if you're not so you should really approach every single person as like it's yep. going to take me a year to work these guys nurture them provide value earn their trust earn their business yep 
and not just like this quick turnaround on the next, on the next totally. too. Because then you're not building a successful book of business that refers you, trusts you, likes you, and wants to send you business because yeah. you're just on to the next mentality and you're not learning anything either. You're just order taking. And there are brokerages that do that. I won't say who they are on here, but there are brokerages that will give you thousands of leads and you're just constantly sh chasing stuff. And then you're spending all of your time chasing clients around not earning any money either. Yeah. So it's uh, it's fascinating. The other downside to it that we've learned is when an agent gets leads and starts selling, they stop prospecting, open houses, cold calling, door knocking, I mean, real stuff. And then their sales close, their three or four leads that they got closed. And then they're like, well, I'm not earning any money. What happened? I'm not doing. Well, that's because you stopped doing the habits that earn that business. Yeah. And that happens all the time too. So we got to constantly figure out What's the right number? And leads are a part of your business, not your entire business. Yeah. Well, and that's like the constant roller coaster of being a real estate agent too. And, yep. And that's like the stress with it too is like, I will say it's like a lot of people look and like see like, oh my gosh, you're making all these commissions. Well, the reality is, you know, no, we don't take the entire commission. You know, it's, there's a cost to doing business. There's time. There's well, the brokerage takes money. There's advertising. There's a fee yeah. to this company. There's a fee for gas. There's a fee for your photographer. There's hundreds yeah. of people taking money out of the cookie jar per se. Yeah, and the, the amount of money that you make, or the the amount of money the average real estate agent makes, it the stress level. I I can see where there's a lot of people that don't stay in it because it is a high stress level business yeah. for sure. Well, and if you start to do the math, you could work, we looked this up, you could look at a fast food, you could work at a fast food restaurant and earn as much as a fast food restaurant manager than you could in real estate. And yeah. it, real estate is usually generally a, a 60, 70 hour a week job. It's nights, weekends, holidays. It's So if you start doing the math, you don't earn as much as you think because you're you're sacrificing a lot. Yeah, and you're, your dealing, family, you're, your friends. you're dealing with a lot of different personalities and dealing with like, I mean, moving stressful. Oh, I, I mean, every time I go into a list and I'm the hardest part of this whole job will be you guys moving, especially if you've been in the home for 10, 15, 20 years. They're that's packing a, up memories. Yeah. And that's a, it's an emotional process. It's a, it's physically daunting. It's emotionally daunting. There's, and, and so then you, you, as an agent, you take that on, you take that stress on too, because they're stressed and they convey that to you. Not that they're they're not upset with you in any way, shape, or form. It's just you do take that on. So it's can be very they stressful. Do, they do bring it to you as a soundboard. And sometimes they're mad about the contractor, about the paint costing so much, and they do um, transfer that to you. Yeah. And they're not, you're just always, you're, you're like the punching bag a lot of the times. Yeah, totally. You know, so it's, it's always interesting to see the dynamics of real estate agents. Because again, why do people move? Uh, that's because it's a life decision. It's not because the interest rate dropped to two percent. I mean, again, that does during during COVID. That, that does was, move that it sometimes, was, right? There was a lot of pleasure moves for sure. There's a lot of pleasure moves, but at the end of the day, it's it's marriage, it's divorce, it's somebody passing away, it's having babies, it's weddings, relocation for work. So it's not it it's a life changing alteration typically that makes a move, and that brings a ton of stress to realtors and some. One of the questions, or I was going to say some of the agents, it affects more than others. But one of the questions we used to ask all the time, which I still ask is, how do you handle stress? And we have to make sure you've got good stress management skills. And people always are thrown off when I ask that question. But it's like, if you just compart, you just put that in a compartment inside of your head and you don't actually fully deal with that, you're going to struggle. Yep. How do you know what's a, who's going to be a good agent or not? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I used to think well, I would know if they took this quiz or they would tell you the right thing or they would make all the you know what we really don't know all right you can look for red flags right like there's certain red flags that stick out to me now when I'm sitting down with somebody I want to make sure that they can have an intelligent conversation they can talk to strangers they can develop relationships there are some keys there that you can find but it, but it is but, amazing how there's some that you're like oh you're gonna kill it you're gonna they crush don't. it and they don't and there's and then, some you like there's no way they're gonna make it and they surprise you yeah because think how many different personalities there are on the team. We don't have tons of like the same personality. Yeah, we There's, don't have a canned no canned type agent. Yeah, it's it's almost like when there's you, no box. There's no box where you have to check. And again, some places and organizations they do quizzes, tests, and they feel like they've cracked the code. To me, you're dealing with the public, and the public wants to work with a lot of different personalities. So if you have somebody that's super analytical 
there's thousands of tens of thousands of people that are analytical in our city that want to work with analytical people. There's people that are aggressive, outgoing, super um, upfront with their personality. And some people love it. A lot of the people don't like it. So I don't think there's a right person, right? I think we've learned as well. Um, now, if, let me ask you this. What if, if I said to you that if you could sit down with an agent, and this, this question came up last week, if you could sit down with an agent and you could give them one piece of advice at real estate school, at real estate school before getting in, what would be your one piece of advice? Like to help them in their career? Yep. To help them in their career. Or, and you can look at it two ways. You can look at it like I'm giving them a realistic picture or read this book, right? Like they're always looking for that secret pill, but. Um, yeah. Well, it's funny because like a lot of, you know, it's like probably getting your insurance license or, or whatever test you're going to take to go into your career is like generally you just, you know, you want to know the things that keep you out of real estate trouble. Yep. Right. And I think the biggest thing, which is just more of a more morality thing is like you, you ought to be ethically sound yep. right you can't just you can't be shady you can't be salesman type or and you, we'll find it yeah Go find it. you gotta you got to be ethical and you got to treat your clients like there's so many times where i'm like just constantly giving out free advice with not expecting anything and you always got to do by, right by the client right yep. because for me that's how i know it's taken me to where i'm at in my career is I'll always do what's right for the client. I'll never look at it like what's in it for me yep. or my commission. And, but to that new agent or someone that's just starting out is I would just say, listen, you just focus on the test, pass. And, and then the next thing to be successful, it's, it's being okay with rejection. It's having that to being tenacious enough to just constantly keep going and keep going. And cause you might go through, three months, four months, five months without seeing hardly any success. Yep. And you got to be willing to push, push through that. And generally once you're able to push through that, whenever that is, maybe it's only 30 days in, as long as you stay consistent with it yep. and you're held accountable to it, like you can go to a level that you've never even thought of. But well, and you start to most put people, out. it's really hard. I think for a lot to get past that rejection. Like I, I remember when I started, right, it was constantly calling for some of my owners. And it was as a 20 year old kid who has a, had a baby face, lots of rejection. Yeah. Like who's going to hire a 20 year old kid? And I looked like I was probably 14 <laughs> to sell their house. It was totally. just constantly. They're like, have you bought a house before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I did buy a house. I bought seven houses that year. Um, See, there you go. Yeah. That's why they trusted you. Yeah. <laughs> but again, tons of rejection oh. where it, you got to be willing to get past that. That's the hardest thing. Well, and you start to doubt yourself. I mean, even agents on our team that have been doing it for a decade, they have self-doubt too. Well, look at it, your wife, Amanda, yep. who's one of our, who's been one of our top performers for years. Yep. She has, she's been sick uh -huh. and so she's on the men now, but she's like, she starts doubting herself and her abilities. It's like, well, Amanda, you've been sick. Like you have a perfectly yep. good reason. <laughs> for Why your sales aren't where they yeah. are. And, but she gets that doubt too. Like I do the same we thing. We all do. You start questioning your existence. I know. Like. That sounds so bad. Yeah. Am I doing this wrong? What approach should we take? And then you start changing everything, thinking there's something wrong. And it, there's normally not. It's just, you haven't been putting in the work consistently. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's. I mean, I, I, I was in the same boat where I was a little slower and. But if I analyze like, okay, I wasn't putting in the work like I should have. And yep. then I started ramping up like. I don't know, like maybe 60 days ago. Yep. And my business is now picking up, picking up big time. So it's just amazing how that works. And you just put in the work, how things will start flourishing. It's boring, mundane stuff. Like that's, if we can remind people or throw this on the podcast, boring, mundane things will pay you and earn you more money than any shiny, fancy object that you can run after every day. If you just did the same boring stuff, you would earn more money than just about probably the top 5% of the country if you just did the boring basic stuff. Yeah. In any career you're in, any career, if you just did the basic boring stuff every day, you would earn the most amount of money at your career or job. Yeah. It's crazy. And, and normally that to me, that's just picking up the phone, getting in front of people. It's probably not like, you know, there again, there's so many different, you know, a lot of people want to be like a social media star, right? Sure. And you know, and I'm, I'm horrible with my social media. I actually find it to be more of a distraction. Now there's, there's a lot of good agents that do really, really good with social media. I'm not one of them. I probably won't ever be one of them. 
but the good thing about real estate is everybody does it differently. Yeah. But I, but I, maybe I'm old school. I don't know, but it's like, just pick up that phone. You make the call. And like, I was prospecting here today before you guys got here. And I, you know, there's this seller, she's going to be selling here. And I've been calling her, calling her. A lot of times it's like no call back, no text message back, nothing. And she picked up the phone. She goes, okay, I'm ready to meet. Perfect. Okay. I'm ready. It's like, I see the blue text getting sent out. Right. And there's nothing on reciprocal side. Like, yeah, there's not, a lot of blue. <laughs> there's a lot of blue. There's no, no white there's back. There's no white on the other side. And if it was Android, it'd be green. But you get my point is like, you've got to constantly be, and it's, I, it sounds bad, but I tell people like, if you don't want to harass people, you shouldn't be in real estate. And people always laugh, but it's, again, you don't have to be annoying or harassing in your, your verbiage. You have to be consistent. So that's market updates, checking in with them, sending over a property you thought of or you saw that might interest them. I mean, it's just staying front of mind when they're ready. And the number one thing realtors don't know is when are they ready? You don't know, so you stay in front of them constantly. Yeah. That way you are ready. I mean, you've reached out to people for 10 years. Um, and most real estate agents typically want 30-day turnaround time. Yeah. Right? So that's, that's probably not what people want to hear either. Hey, I'm jumping into a career that takes a year to two years to get sales from somebody. It sounds scary. They'd rather get sales in minutes. Yep. You know, but um, yeah, it's always interesting. So the point of talking about this, you know, it's again, we were trying to figure out like, what is the point of talking about this? But to yep. me, like, as we're, as we're talking about, it's like also knowing like, listen, you can be brand new in this yep. business and see success. Massive. Like within two to three years, you can be, again, and we have that on our team. Yeah. Where within two to three years, you're considered one of the top agents in our marketplace. Yes. You got to put in the work, but you can see that. And I think that's what's exciting too, is we all started somewhere and, um, and it's kind of like, just, it's, it's now it's our thing. Yes. It's our team's thing. It's, it's our team's thing. We don't have like a bunch of veteran agents that came from different teams or brokerages or whatever and, yeah. and just joined our team. It's, we're the younger team. We're doing things a little bit differently, but we're definitely, we're not reinventing the wheel. The wheel. Yeah. We're, and we're dang proud of it. Yeah. You know, like, and we brag about it. I mean, it's, I'm constantly on social media trying to push back against what is the norm in real estate because I don't, I, Amanda didn't fit that box 11 years ago. She didn't have a big database. She wasn't super outgoing. She couldn't talk to everybody she ever met in her life. Like she wasn't her typical check the box realtor, people would say. So that's probably why I'm so passionate that you gave Amanda a chance. And that's why I constantly try to give quote unquote, newer agents a chance because it's you can change your life with real estate probably more than just about any career that I've ever seen because of all the cool stuff that goes with it and uh you get to make money essentially meeting strangers and talking to them mm -hmm. it's crazy yep. I mean there's not a lot of the places where you get to sit around and talk and make money um so it's great but another thing that I thought about is and we won't have retention um we'll have to kick it um agent retention for another um, podcast. But what I was going to say is what would be the thing that you have seen to have, or excuse me, what would be the thing that keeps real estate realtors or a real estate agent near you or around you? Like, and this maybe is retention, but how have you found success keeping agents um, around you and working with you and on the team? Because again, we always say, and our coach says this all the time, you can earn 5%, 10%, whatever the percentage is. You can earn more money going across the street and working with somebody else. Yeah. So what would you say is why do agents continue to stay around you and work with you past the quote unquote time they're supposed to go out and do it on their own? Yeah. I, I mean, I would say for me, I'm a lot of, I'm, I'm in the trenches with them. I think that was always that. Now that I'm starting to go through a shift in my career where I'm, I don't see myself ever getting out of production. I see myself being maybe more selective and, um, and, and really going deep with like certain types of clients, I yep. guess. And, um, and then referring off my, you know, others to that. I feel it to other agents on our team that are good fits for those specific clients yep. basically based on their personality. But I, again, I'm in the trenches. I would say too, probably the number one thing is I, I give a shit, yep. you know, I care about them. I care about their success. I care about like, and not just like on a, on a success level, like a, a personal level, like 
um, you know, there's an agent on our team going through a hard time personally. And like a lot of times it's spent like talking him through that, you know, and like giving him my advice and, and maybe my advice isn't like perfect, but like, I'm, I, I want to be able to try to offer some advice that might help them through that situation. Um, you know, I, I think that's probably one of the bigger things. Like, I think most people know, like e even in our brokerage, like Vince knows this, like I'm a very emotional person. Like I'm always the first to cry and, and like go, go deep with stuff, but I, I do like care. And, you know, you want to see people succeed in all, like all aspects of life, not just like going and making money and succeeding sure. and good client reviews and, and being ethically sound. You want to see them like do good in their personal life, whether it's their marriage with their kids, like having this balance too. Um, and that can be very, very difficult when you're a real estate agent or, or like in any sales. Well, there's too. a lot of temptation, you know, and there's a lot of negative things that go in with more money is there's temptation and you could abandon your, your kids and your, and your spouse because you're constantly working. That's the downside is you're, every day you're basically jobless and every day you're trying to figure out how I can, let's just say, get the most amount of clients and you can work yourself to death in this job. And that's what you mentioned earlier with, with alcohol or drugs is you can go down those gateway paths and it can just turn deadly for agents. And we've seen that. Yeah. You know, so it's, but I think that you said, you know, what you just said is agents bring that up to me all the time. And they say that all the time is they're like, the reason why I'm on this team isn't because you guys give X or Y or Z or I earn the most amount of money. Because let's be honest, you can go be a hundred percent agent, pay for everything, right? You can pay for everything. You can, you know, spend 90 grand and make 120, right? So in your mind, you're not making as much, but I think we care about our people. And it was an agent I called on Friday and it was a similar conversation. They were like really struggling and they didn't want to admit certain things that were going on in their personal life. And I was like, you know, why I'm calling isn't because you didn't sell a house in 20 days or something. I'm calling because I have noticed a change in your personality. I've noticed a change in your behaviors. Yeah. And yeah. it's just, and they were like crying and they were very grateful to be like, well, you actually care. We don't just say that to attract people. Like literally, I know with Adam and with Stacy and myself and our entire staff, like we actually care if the people are happy and doing good in the community. We don't want just someone earning tons of money and doing the wrong things. Yeah. Because that just will do no good. And, and you know, a little bit on that little change, but like the, the old me, the old team, yeah. where it was like we call the Navy SEAL team, where oh, there's like 10 of us, we all hung out together constantly. We, we partied together, we drank, we did happy hour. Like we were super close knit. And then as you grow the team, and, and actually the older I get, I realize, you know, I, I don't need more friends. Yep. Um, I want to be able to influence people in a positive way. So we're not like necessarily going out and hanging out and partying or doing happy hour or that. Now, within the team members, they do that. Of course, we do. I'm not doing that with them. You're not doing that with yep. them. And they um, are making lifelong friends. Yeah, totally. And um, it's it's just more like a- We want to be a good role model, not the one yeah. doing drugs with them or drinking alcohol with them or- not being with our significant others or our kids. Yeah. We try to be good role models with our agents or our employees. And what's interesting is, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but actually somebody from our mortgage office said one of the reasons why they want to work with us is because of your religion and how passionate you are about your religion and how much the family concept to you is the first thing that you think about is like, how am I, how can I put my family first, my kids and my wife, and then my business second? Yeah. And a totally. lot of people are like that. Yeah. And that's the, literally the single reason she works with us and continues to work with us is because of you as a person and your kind of your beliefs. So it's, it's yep. kind of crazy to think about, but yeah. Yeah. It's totally. Interesting. Yeah. I love it. I yep. love it. So, Anyway, that's uh, that's kind of, I mean, it's interesting that we talked about, right, new real estate agents off the street and we end with like <laughs> being a good person, but it's true. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you earn in your bank account because if you're not doing the right things, it, you're going to find no happiness unless you enjoy the ride along the way because we know plenty of people that have money that are depressed beyond belief. Yeah, so trying to fill a void where- You're not going to fill a void with more money. Yeah. 
you know, or things or whatever, or more things. Yeah. So it's just, it's, but I think the, the, I just, what I want to close with is, is I think when you work with somebody like, let's say Adam, and when I say I've worked at other employers, other people, and the amount of compassion and care you have for others, I, I you just don't see very often. I mean, Vince is one of those guys also, and that's why his brokerage has been so successful. Oh yeah. Because of his, because of his caring. Yeah. You know, like, um, just, and I would say he's he's a huge influence on my life. I yeah. mean, clearly he's like, like he's like an uncle or a brother, whatever you want to say. But he's huge impact on my life. Yeah, in in that category too. Exactly. Yeah, it's just I think if I think again, if and he's said, and he's level headed. Yes, you wouldn't. Know that. Yeah, the ras most rational guy you'll ever meet <laughs> doesn't get worked up on anything. He really doesn't. Not often. That's for unless sure. it's a Chiefs game. Yeah, that's true. So I can't imagine how he was uh, for the Super Bowl. I know, especially that first <laughs> half. I bet he was a mess. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. All right. So, well, thanks for listening, guys.